So R equals 1 plus sine of theta. We wanted to know the slope of the tangent when theta was pi over 3. We had graphed it in maple. And uh, if you go back and looked at pi over 3, pi over 3, which is you know, like 60 degrees, is going to be um, a slope of negative 1. Now we want to know where is it horizontal and where is it vertical. There's two ways to do that. You can go back the way that I told you on the previous page and just solve this equation for where it's horizontal and this equation for where it's vertical. Or you can use the fact that we've already simplified this thing and we have right here our derivative. Right? That is the slope of the tangent line. So that would be zero when sine of 2 theta plus cosine of theta equals 0. And it'll be vertical when cosine of 2 theta minus sine of theta equals 0. Um, so solving these for theta in this particular form is not all that uh, useful. So I actually don't even like using my simplified version. For all that work, I'm going to actually go back to what we had before, which was here and here. So I'm going to use this for the horizontal. I'm going to use this for the vertical. Meaning I'm setting the numerator equal to zero, and I'm setting the denominator equal to zero. The reason I don't like this is that i got a 2 theta inside here and a theta. If you try to get theta by itself, you see the problem? I'm trying to figure out how to get the sine and cosine off at the same time. But if I put this back in there, that is, rewrite this as actually, maybe I'm, I'm coming all the way down here, as 2 cosine theta sine theta plus cosine theta equals 0. That's actually a little bit better because I can factor this. Do you see that? What can I factor out? Cosine, cosine theta leaves behind what? Okay. Now what you have is the product of two functions equal to zero. <laughs> And the zero property rule says what? Cosine of theta equals zero, and two sine of theta plus one equals zero. So when those are zero, my de the derivative up here, my slope and my tangent, is going to be zero. So cosine of theta equals zero. Where is cosine of theta zero? Between zero and two pi. And where else? Mm -hmm. You can look at your reference pages. You've got a table on one of those that shows you where it is between 0 and uh, pi, I think. Uh, but if you do uh, cosine, remember cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle. So the x coordinate is 0 up here and down here. So that's where I get pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now if I solve this one, I get, subtract 1 from both sides, 2 sine of theta is negative 1. So sine of theta is negative 1 half. So first of all, where is sine negative. Sine is the y coordinate. It's 3 and 4. It's down here, right? That's where y is negative down here. So it's going to be where the opposite over hypotenuse is 1 over 2, right? So Remember your 30, 60, 90 triangle gives you a 2 and a 1. So this has to be 30 degrees here. This has to be 30 degrees here. To get a negative 1 over 2 and negative 1 over 2. So the first one is 
theta is pi plus 30 degrees, or pi plus pi over 6. That's 7 pi over 6. And then this one over here is 2 pi minus pi over 6, which is 11 pi over 6. Yeah, well, I remember that, remember the, the 30, 60, 90 triangle is the one that has two for the hypotenuse, the short side is one, and square root of three is the long side. That's, I remember that triangle, right? So that, I know that in order to get opposite over hypotenuse to be a half, my 30 is going to be my inside angle here. And I know that it's quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 because it gives me a negative. And sine is negative. You remember the rule? What's the rule that you remember where the sines and cosines and tangents are positive? Remember this? ASTC? You've seen that before? All, I always say this, all students take calculus. That's where there's positive. All are positive here. Sine is positive up here and negative elsewhere. Tangent's positive down here. Cosine's positive down here. So sine's negative down here in the bottom, right? And so that's why I drew the 30 down there. And then I used pi plus 30 or 2 pi minus 30 to get the other two angles. And remembering that 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. So that's where I got 7 pi over 6. That's pi plus pi over 6. And then 11 pi over 6 is 2 pi minus pi over 6. Now, if you go back to the picture, now I'm going to jump away from this a second. I want to get it up in uh, uh, maple again. So I just want to look at the picture of this, this graph. Remember it was a plot, this was 1 plus sine of t, was it 1 plus? Yes. Yes. Comma t goes from 0 to 2 times pi, comma chords equal polar. I'm going to give this 1 to 1 ratio. Okay, so looking at this picture, where is... Uh, where are the horizontal tangents? There's one up here, right? There's one here, and there's one here. And the other place that I got zero on top happens to be on the down angle, right? I've got this upward angle here. I've got an angle here. I've got an angle here. So this happens to be my pi over 2. This down here is my 3 pi over 2. That's what's happening at that cusp in the middle. So as we're going to see in a minute, we're going to get that that is also a um, vertical tangent. And if they're both zero, the top and the bottom of zero, then it's not either of those two things. It actually turns out to be a cusp in this case. But notice how pi over, sorry, negative pi, well, not negative, that's 7 pi over 6 right there. And this one over here turned out to be 11 pi over 6. That corresponds with what we just solved for, where it's horizontal. Okay? All right. Turn that off. Go back to over here. Now, where is it vertical? I've got to solve this. But again, this one's also a pain in the rear to solve because the 2 theta, sine theta. So what might we use instead of this? The original, which was <clears throat> cosine squared minus sine squared of theta minus sine of theta. Okay. Um, any suggestions on how to solve that? 
Well, the problem is this one over here doesn't have a sign in it. You can factor it out over here, but I don't know what I would do next. What if we got them all in signs? Can we replace this with something that has just signs in it? What does that become? Yeah, it's 1 minus. 1 minus sine squared of theta. That's what this cosine squared becomes. Minus sine squared of theta. Minus sine of theta equals 0. Or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta minus sine of theta. Equals 0. Now what? Did that help us at all? Because I have never turned the business on. You can put one over. Yeah, go ahead and take it out. Yeah, but when you have two things multiplied together to give you one, you can't use this rule. It has to equal zero to be able to do the set both equal to zero. Let me give you a hint of how, I, how I'm seeing this. I see this as 1 minus 2 u squared minus u equals 0. It's like a substitution, but the result is this quadratic looking thing. Right? You know how to solve quadratic equations. Right? Could you just move it around? Yeah, in fact, what, why don't I do this? Why don't I move everything to this side? and write it as 2u squared plus u minus 1 equals 0. You see what I did? It's quadratic in sign. If I can solve this for you, then I just plug, plug the sign back in. Okay. So what, what do you, how do you solve this? Well, you do, you're going to do the reverse foil. So you're going to do 2, U, and U. Yeah, and so whatever technique you use to be able to factor that, where you either split the middle term or you just figure out that because this is minus here, you know this has to be opposite signs, so either plus and minus or minus and plus. I'm going to try a minus and plus, 1 and 1. Does that work? It's 2u and minus u. That gives me a plus u, right? So that works? Yep, and the 2u times positive 1 is positive 2. So now what I do is I set them equal to 0, right? 2u minus 1 equals 0 and u plus 1 equals 0. But not really u, but... <sighs> okay, so if I solve this one over here, I get... Add 1 to both sides and then divide by 2, I get 2 sine theta equals 1, so sine theta is 1 half. So it's also sine, so it's going to be this 30, 60, 90 triangle over here, but it's positive, so it's up here, and it's right there, right? where that's pi over 6 in here, and that's pi over 6, or 30 in there. So what are my two thetas? Pi over 6 for this one, and then pi minus pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. Okay. This one over here gives me sine of theta is negative 1. And 
that only has one answer between 0 and 2 pi. Remember, sine is the y coordinate. So 3 pi over 2. So, sorry I ran out of space here, but let, let's come down here and write our final answer. Okay, Where is it horizontal? At theta equals pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. I'm going to write them all out, and I'm going to come back and x out 3 pi over 2 because it shows up in both of them. But 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And it's vertical for theta equals pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and 3 pi over 2. But if it appears in both of them, mark it out. Because it's not horizontal or vertical if both derivatives are equal to 0. Because it's both of them, you, when you, if you go back to your original fraction, the one that I was looking up up here that I drew the arrows from, that means you got 0 over 0. Oh. 0 over 0 is not 0, and 0 over 0 is not infinity. It could be anything. So you don't know if that's a horizontal or vertical or none of the above. Okay? Usually that results in what's called a cusp. And that's what we see in this particular case where it forms this little divot, right? Where it's a corner. But that's not horizontal. That's not vertical. So that's why. Okay. So that's the end of that one. That took a little longer than expected, but that's how we finished that problem.